If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you would know that one of my favorite tools to use as a filmmaker is my gimbal. Hey Liz. Yeah? Are you excited? The main reason that I love my gimbal is how functional it is. Any tool that allows me to lighten my kit while increasing my flexibility as a filmmaker is a tool that I like to keep around and my gimbal allows me to do just that. Before we get into this video, I just want to preface it and say that Zion did in fact send me their Crane 3 Lab for free to review, but I'm under no obligation to say anything positive about it that I don't agree with. So if it sucks, I would tell you guys, but you're going to have to watch the video to see what I think about it. Now you may be wondering, how on earth does carrying something like this in my bag lighten my kit? Because this thing's decently heavy. Well, by just having this gimbal in my bag, I'm able to emulate things like a slider, a jib, and a tripod with just one tool. And if I were to carry all those things around, probably not possible, but if I were to, it would be a lot bigger than just this. And that's why I love the gimbal. I'm not just talking about this gimbal, but gimbals in general, they're super multifunctional, and for the style of filmmaking that I shoot, these are super helpful. Now, prior to receiving the Zion Crane 3 Lab, the gimbal I was rocking before was the Zion Crane 2, so this guy's older brother. So that thing was an absolute beast. I loved it. So, naturally, when Zion reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try their Crane 3, I couldn't say no. I'd had awesome experiences with them thus far, and I was glad to share my experience with their new gimbal with you guys. Now, although I love their Crane 2, and I've used it a ton, seriously, I've put that thing through its paces, there are two main reasons I was excited to get my hands on this bad boy. If you've been keeping track of the handheld gimbals released over the past two years, you'd realize that there's a really not been a lot of change until this guy hit the market. Now there's a reason for that. The standard handheld gimbal shape has just worked for most mirrorless and DSLR cameras. However, and the reason that I was super excited to get my hands on this one, is I'm shooting with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And that thing is quite oddly shaped. It's very long, it's very wide. Now when operating your normal standard handheld gimbal with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, it can be a bit difficult to mount it. You're going to need a cage or a cheese plate to offset the camera so you can mount it, and then you might need some weights to counterbalance it as the camera's already offset. It can really be a pain to mount your camera on those other gimbals if you're not using a standard Sony mirrorless or Canon DSLR camera, and because I'm not, that was a big reason that I was excited to try out this thing. Now I purchased my Crane 2 back when I was using my Sony mirrorless cameras and it was more than capable of handling their weight. However, when I got my Blackmagic camera and I put it on the Crane 2, the second that I pass, I would say 30 or 40 degrees on the tilt function, the motors give out, it can't handle it as the camera is a bit too heavy. Realizing that, I was like, I need a gimbal that can lift more weight and this guy does just that. With a maximum capacity of just over 10 pounds, these motors have no issue handling my Blackmagic camera. I'm super thankful for that. Okay, well all of that's awesome. The Crane 3 has indeed solved my issues with the previous generation Crane 2 having an increased payload capacity and a more flexible shape for different shaped cameras. But both of those things don't mean much if the Crane 3 sucks to use. So let's talk about that. The gimbal itself works like basically every other gimbal in the world. You balance your camera on there and then the three axis motors work alongside you to manipulate the camera's movement and remove shake. Now most gimbals these days can get you this far. Most gimbals will be able to do that, albeit some will be able to hold heavier cameras than others, but most gimbals will be able to give you those smooth shots you're looking for. However, with so many gimbals on the market, what makes a gimbal stand out is its usability and what it's like to actually work with the gimbal. Now because I was so fond of the Zion Crane 2, I was beyond excited to try out the Crane 3. But I can say after over a solid month of working with this thing, it has replaced the Crane 2 in my bag, and this is my primary workhorse right now. From a usability perspective, the motors on this thing are extremely solid and capable of carrying more weight than its predecessors. The movement of the gimbal is super fluid and responsive, making sure that it always does exactly what I want it to do. I'm gonna quickly run through a couple of my favorite features on the Zion Crane 3 Lab. I think most obviously is going to be the shape. 
Now I'm not gonna lie, when I first got my hands on the gimbal, I was not a huge fan of the shape, or at least I didn't think I would be, until the first time that I ended up using it. After about 10 or 15 minutes of using the Crane 3 Lab, it finally clicked and I realized how much I actually enjoy the shape of it. Having one hand on the back handle and one hand on the tripod handle gives you much better control, allowing you to nail those smooth movements. And then when you want to switch the gimbal into briefcase mode, that back handle turns into a top handle, giving you a way better grip. I'm a huge fan of designing Crane 3's new gimbal shape, and for me, ergonomically, it works a lot better, it gives you a lot more control, and I just enjoy using it more. The Crane 2 didn't have locking axes, so I didn't know what I was missing out until I got my hands on this guy. The locking axes make it way easier to transport your gimbal. It allows you the flexibility to put your gimbal down without worrying about the camera flying everywhere. And if you're in less than ideal conditions, it helps so much when you're trying to balance your camera on the gimbal. I've already touched on it briefly, but the undersling briefcase mode that the Zion Crane 3 allows you to do with this back handle works a lot better than the previous crane did. The back handle gives you a really comfortable grip for when you're using it in briefcase mode, as well as a lot more flexibility and control over your movement. With the Crane 3, all you have to do is flip it over and click the reset button to get into briefcase mode, whereas the Crane 2, you would kind of have to do a weird jig with the handle and putting it over top, and then it goes into an undersling mode. I don't know, it worked, and I used it a lot. It's probably the main way that I run my gimbal, but I feel this just works a lot better. Now, although I love this gimbal, I do have a couple minor annoyances that I want to share with you guys, one of which being diagonal movements. Now, a gimbal movement that I often make is a mixture of a pan, so you're going left to right while you're tilting up and down, so it kind of creates like a diagonal movement. And I've found that sometimes, not all the time, it, it happens randomly, but occasionally when you're making diagonal movements with the gimbal, the, uh, the gimbal can give you a micro jitter. It will just happen for a split second and you can see it in post and sometimes or oftentimes you can fix it with warp stabilizer. It really isn't that noticeable and it's not a big deal. And like I said, it only happens occasionally, but it's something that I have noticed. Now the second minor annoyance that I have with this gimbal pretty minor, it is probably a bit nitpicky, but I mean, that's a good thing because it shows that there's nothing glaring that is wrong with this gimbal. My annoyance comes with the quick release system that this gimbal uses. Now it uses the standard Manfrotto 501 quick release plates, which are great, I love them, I have no issues with that, but I do have an issue with the knob that the quick release system uses on the gimbal. Now the standard gimbal or tripod has a knob that you can kind of turn continuously until it tightens onto the plate and then the plate doesn't move anymore, but this gimbal uses kind of a, a knob or a lever that only tightens or only moves like 180 degrees. So it goes from open to closed and it clamps down on the plate. Now this is fine for the most part, but occasionally if this gets lifted up and moved, then when you clamp down, it will either be too tight or too loose and you won't be able to clamp down onto the plate uh, tight enough or it will be too tight and you can't fit the plate in. Now again, it's a minor problem, it's easily fixable, you just lift the lever up and tighten or loosen it, but when you're on a job and you're in a rush, it can be a bit annoying. With that being said though, if you're able to live with those minor annoyances, I cannot recommend the Zion Crane 3 Lab enough. All in all, after heavily using this gimbal for over a month filming everything from weddings to corporate work and travel films, I have to say that this thing is a tank, it's been reliable, and I look forward to picking it up every time I go to use a gimbal. Thank you so much for watching, dudes. I appreciate every single one of you so much, and I'll see you all in another one.